Another starts with a screenshot of a dam as Koichi Sokakibara, the protagonist, asks a girl if she had heard of Misaki from the ninth grade, class three, who attended in 1972. He goes on to say that she was smart, pretty, and very popular. She suddenly died from an accident which shocked the class. However, someone after she was dead suddenly pointed to Misaki's desk and said, Misaki's right there. She's not dead. The class pretended that she was still alive and kept the act up until graduation. While the preceding narration was going on, there were screenshots of dolls, black and white photos, and shots of a school. The story then switches to Koichi, who has just moved from Tokyo to a small town where his grandparents live because of his father going to India for business. Koichi is in the hospital because of a punctured lung and has not yet been able to go to his new school. He is visited by his class representatives who introduce themselves and ask questions about if he had ever lived in this town before. He responds with no, but he had visited when he was younger. The representatives continually pass awkward glances at each other before they leave. Koichi goes to the hospital's base to call his father when he sees a girl with an eye patch. They make small talk, and he asks for her name, which is Misaki. He thinks nothing of this encounter, and eventually attends his new school days later. He tries to fit in, but he notices how weird his classmates act. They're very strange around him. Misaki is in the same class as him, but nobody talks or interacts with her. He asks another classmate about her, who seems very confused. Koichi then tracks down Misaki, who tells him his classmates associate her name with death and that he better not associate himself with her anymore. While Koichi is talking with two of his classmates, one, Noya Teshigawaria, lets slip that Class 3-3 is cursed. Before Noya can explain himself, Koichi spies Mei in the library and joins her. He asks her about Eye Patch, but she refuses to tell him anything about it. The librarian, Mr. Chibiki, arrives and tells Koichi to leave. Later, troubled by his interactions with Mai, Koichi goes to the hospital and asks a nurse he met during his stay there, Sene Mizuno, about a girl who may have died on the night of his discharge. Although she doesn't know much about it at first, she later calls him back to say that a junior high school student did indeed die that night and that her name was something like Misaki or Masaki Koichi who was standing in front of a mysterious puppet museum when he got the call, debating whether or not to go inside, but after some hesitation, resolves to enter, and he heads into the basement, where he sees a doll that resembles Mai Misaki. The real Mai appears, and asks him if he thinks the dolls are creepy, but he doesn't think so. She then asks him if he would like to look at what was beneath her eye patch. Mai reveals that her left eye is a doll's eye that can see things that should remain unseen, before admitting that the girl who died in the hospital was her cousin, whose name was Misaki Fujioka. She then tells Koichi part of a story concerning a student, also called Masaki, from 26 years ago, who died part way through the school year but still appeared on the class graduation photo. Much to his dismay, Koichi's fellow students continue to behave strangely when he brings up the tale of May, which further increases his frustration. After the day ends, Koichi is shown to be in class and then is approached by Yukari Sakuraji. She asks if he brought an umbrella with him, and Koichi's response is no, as he didn't think he needed one. Yukari then nervously asks if he'd like to walk home with her, as their houses aren't too far apart, and Koichi eventually agrees. In class the next day, Mai enigmatically claims she is something that doesn't exist, and can only be seen by Koichi. In the meantime, Yukari receives bad news about her mother and rushes out of the classroom. Shocked upon seeing Mai and Koichi, she trips down the stairs her umbrella lands point up and impales her throat, killing her. A week following, Koichi, still thinking about Yukari's death, goes to the hospital for a checkup. There he meets Sane, who asks him how he's feeling, and he says that his lungs are fine. They meet up and discuss his class's curse. Sane tells Koichi to be careful, and they go their separate ways. Afterward, he encounters another classmate named Ayano, and they talk about how she's a good actor since she's in the theater club. Suddenly the wind blows and pushes a glass that was in a truck towards them. Koichi manages to save them when they are nearly crushed by a falling sheet of glass. She promptly breaks down in tears and screams that she doesn't want to die. Koichi once again goes to the puppet museum to see Mai, but she refuses to tell him the rest of the story and instead tells him to 
be careful. As Sane contacts Koichi the next day over whether Mai exists or not, she is killed when the elevator she is riding falls down the shaft and crushes her. Mizuno's death was a terrible shock and became the talk of the school, especially in class 3.3. Koichi visits the site of the incident and looks on in shock. Later, Koichi tells Misaki what happened to Sane and asks her about the rest of the story 26 years ago. Koichi enters the classroom and wonders why nobody is there. The teacher tells them he can go home early. He decides to wait for Mochizuki and Takabayashi at the entrance of the school and invites them to go home with him. While they are walking, Koichi asks them about the strange events that are happening. Takabayashi, thinking that Koichi should also know what was happening around him, tells Koichi to ask him anything. Koichi asks if Mei exists, but before Takabayashi even finishes what he is saying, he has a heart attack. The next day, he realizes that everybody is ignoring him as if he does not exist. While Koichi is being interrogated by the police regarding Sane's death, Class 3-3 has an emergency meeting. The next day, he realizes that everybody is ignoring him as if he does not exist. As he tries to understand why the class is acting this way, he receives a note telling him that Mei can give him an explanation. Later on, he visits the doll shop once again, and Mei finally reveals the mystery behind the deaths and the history of Class 3-3. Through a flashback, it is shown how Mei was chosen as the student to be ignored. Mei and Koichi's discussion continues until the arrival of Mei's mother, the one who makes the dolls for the museum. They seem to have a very distant relationship, which surprises Koichi. That evening, Mei walks Koichi home from her house while they talk about their families and their lives. They eventually reach a playground in which they talk about the class's countermeasures, and Koichi tells her he thinks the class is being unreasonable. However, Mei tells him it might be worth it since it's sad when people die. When they reach the river, Mei tells Koichi the story of her left eye and how it was removed. He tells her she shouldn't leave it covered since he thinks it looks beautiful. Later, while Koichi is on the phone with his father, the latter asks him how it feels to be back in Yomiyama after being gone for a year and a half, to which Koichi responds he's never been there before. His father appears to think it over, then claims it was a mistake and the call is cut off. Sometime afterward, Mai and Koichi go to the library and discuss the calamity with Chibiki, who reveals he's kept records of the events over the past 26 years and shares his findings with them. Mr. Kubodera, the homeroom teacher, stabs himself to death in front of his class, leaving the students traumatized. It is later revealed that before killing himself, Kubodera had also murdered his ailing mother. This event proves that the countermeasures in effect so far have been unsuccessful, so may and Koichi's existence is once again acknowledged by their classmate. Afterward, Koichi meets up with Yuya, Noya, and Izumi in a cafe, where Yuya's older half-sister tells them about Katsumi Matsunaga, a former Class 3-3 student. He managed to stop the phenomenon back in 1983 and left information on how he did it for future students to find. However, it seems as though he does not remember what or where this information may be. Koichi explains the situation to Mei, including his fear of being the dead one behind the year's calamity, to which she eerily responds that you are not the one. Goichi, Riko, and a few students from Class 3-3 go to a nearby beach resort to meet Matsunaga. Although tense at first, they are all relieved when they successfully leave Yomiyama without any incident, convinced that the curse is ineffective outside the town. As Katsumi is busy, they go to the beach and spend the afternoon having fun, even organizing a fishing contest test for food. Katsumi joins them later on, but still doesn't remember what clue he's left or where, though he does mention that it isn't paper. Suddenly the weather acts up and a gust of wind blows the beach ball far into the water. One of the students, Nakeo, volunteers to bring it back, but drowns in the process. Shortly after, his body is torn up by a motorboat, prompting everyone to realize that the curse may not be limited to Yomiyama. Katsumi, clearly in a state of shock, mutters that he protected them and that he's left it, presumably the clue, in the classroom. Following Nakeo's funeral, Chibiki reveals that Nakeo most likely died from a head trauma he received while still in Yomiyama. After a discussion, Koichi, Yuya, and Noya decide to look for the item Katsumi mentioned in the old building. The group runs into Mei, and the four of them search the old 3-3 classroom. There, Koichi finds an audio tape by Katsumi in which he explains what happened on the school trip to the shrine 15 years 
years ago, although praying at the shrine proved ineffective, something did happen that was very important. However, before it could be revealed, a teacher arrives, forcing the group to hide. Noya accidentally breaks the cassette in the process, but Yuya offers to repair it. Meanwhile, Ayano and her family, who were moving out of town, are killed when their car is hit by a falling rock and steers off a cliff, while Yumi returns home to discover her brother has been killed after a truck carrying an excavator crashed into her house. As the class goes on its trip, Koichi and the others listen to the repaired tape in which Katsumi explains he accidentally killed someone in a fistfight. When he couldn't find the body the next day, he discovered no one else knew of the dead one, leading him to the conclusion he had killed the extra student, believing that was what could stop the calamity. During dinner that night, as Izumi starts blaming Mai for the deaths, a boy suffers an asthma attack. Shibiki offers to drive him to the hospital. Later that night, Mei invites Koichi to her room to show him the haunted class 3-3 photo of 1972 before revealing her cousin. Misaki Fujioka was her twin sister as she was taken in by her aunt when her pregnancy failed. This brings up the prospect that Fujioka's death in April was the first that occurred, meaning the extra student was already in the class before Koichi arrived. Mei then explains how her doll's eyelids help her to see the color of death, which is her proof that Koichi is not the extra student. Before she can reveal who the extra is, Noya bursts in, saying he may have just killed someone innocent. Noya explains how he pushed Tomohiko off the balcony, believing him to be the extra person, as Koichi and Mei go with Noya to check if he's still alive. Koichi finds that someone had been stabbed, the dining hall on fire, and the manager killed. As Noya and Yuya discover the tape has gone missing, they are attacked and chased after by the hotel mistress. Meanwhile, Izumi's friend, Takako Sejira, who believes Mai is the extra one, due to being different from the Misaki she knew in elementary school, broadcasts the tape across the hotel, ordering everyone to kill Mei. As Koichi and Mei try to escape, Ms. Mikami is killed protecting Mei, while Yumi dies trying to chase after them. After a backdraft from the dining hall, kills another. Another student, Takako, injures Koichi and comes after Mei, but is strangled to death when she gets caught in some wires. As Izumi comes onto the scene, believing Mei killed Takako, Mei runs off, leaving Koichi behind. As more students die, trying to escape from the hotel, Chibiki arrives to save Noya and Yuya from the killer. Meanwhile, Koichi comes across Kazami, who had been randomly killing students to find the extra one, and starts attacking Koichi, but is stopped dead by Izumi. Koichi returns to the house, where he finds Izumi attempting to kill Mei, only for her to be hit by shattered glass caused by a lightning strike. As she passes away, she mentions to Koichi how they had met a year and a half ago as Koichi finds Mei. Later on, he learns that the extra one is Ms. Mikami and Riko, who died a year and a half ago. Realizing the memories he had forgotten, Koichi reluctantly kills Riko himself, ending the calamity, though he passes out from a relapse. After Koichi and Mei reflect on the memories they may soon forget, they and the other students record a new message for those who may face this calamity in the future. As Noya and Yuya hide the message, the last lines of the message are heard. That's how you stop the calamity. How you interpret this is up to you. Just carefully consider your actions, think it through, and discuss it with your friends so you'll have no regrets. Who do you think the extra one was? Tell us in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe and like, and also press the bell icon to watch more videos.